Hello students, welcome you back to the science class. I hope you all are doing good. So, dear students, as you all know that we have successfully completed the chapter Wind, Storm and Cyclone. Yes? So, today it's the high time for you all to revise the chapter as a whole in the form of a mind map. So, what we are going to do is in this session, we are going to revise all the concepts which we have come across in this particular chapter so that the chapter will become very much clear for you all. Clear? So let's start. So children, here you can see the mind map of the chapter Wind, Storm and Cyclone. So this mind map is the simplest and easiest form of all. But while drawing the mind map, you can include some drawings as well, okay, related to the concern topic. You can add some, uh, no, some drawing to make it more effective, which will make you to learn the topics very easily. Alright, so first in this chapter we have started with the properties of air, means the air with different properties, we have discussed the characteristics of air, okay, we have discussed the characteristics of air and in that, uh, uh, sorry, in that uh, topic we discussed the three different characteristics, do you remember that? So the first characteristic was air exerts pressure, okay. This is the first uh, the characteristics which we have discussed. Then the second is air expands on heating. And then the third was uh, high speed wind is always accompanied by reduced air pressure. So let us discuss all uh, these three characteristics of the uh, characteristics of the air. So in that, um, like in the first uh, characteristic, we have discussed that air exerts pressure. And we try to prove that by, you know, by performing some activities. I hope you remember that. You, uh, we have discussed the topic. Uh, we have discussed the example of distorting a, a tin can. Distorting a tin can or distortion of a tin can. Okay. So, uh, I think you remember uh, what we have discussed in that activity. Uh, we discussed that when there is a pressure difference. Okay, when there is a pressure difference, the inner pressure and the external pressure, then what happens? The shape of the particular object gets changed. Okay, so there is also one condition. So let us re recapture this uh, activity once again. So in this activity, what we have discussed is, if you take a tin can with some hot boiling water, okay, and then uh, the hot boiling water will release some, you know, uh, some amount of steam, that water vapor, that will be inside the uh, tin can. Okay. Now, when we take that, uh, uh, that tin can along with the hot water and steam and we pour cold water on the surface of that particular tin, then what will happen? The shape of the tin will get distorted. That is because of the air pressure. Okay, Because of the difference in air pressure, the internal uh, pressure and the external pressure. So, what happens in that case is uh, when the, I know, the vapor comes in contact with the uh, water from externally the water which we poured over that tin no it is cold and then when it comes in contact means the steam which is inside when it comes in contact with the cold cold uh, now cold surface or you can say the cold water externally out of the tin then what will happen the steam which is inside the tin can it get condensed and it get converted into water droplets and as a result what happened the pressure drops down the pressure inside the tin can drops down and the pressure reduced okay then what happens the pressure from outside the air exerts pressure and as a result the shape of the tin can get distorted so this activity proves that air exerts pressure you can take another activity also that uh, or uh, sucking of the, you can say the drains with the help of the straw also, it is also an example of uh, the pressure difference, okay, where also you can prove that air exerts pressure, fine. So we are not going to get into the depth of those activities which we have done since it's a mind map, we have to cover all the different concepts, okay. So now the next was air expands on heat. So this is another, uh, this is the other property of the air or rather you can say the uh, characteristic of air. Okay, so in this characteristic it says that when we, you know, I mean the air, when it comes in contact with the heat, okay, then what happens? The molecules, uh, the molecules, the air particles, they will take up the energy and they, uh, they used to expand, they start to increase their size, okay, and as a result they used to rise up, okay, gradually they increase the size and they, use, they become lighter and they rise up. So, 
air expands on heating. That also we have proved by taking the test tubes. I hope you remember taking the test tube and two beakers with the cold water and warm water. Then we place the test tube in both the uh, beakers along with one balloon which is fitted at the mouth of the test tubes. Okay. I hope you remember that. And then what we have seen after some time, the test tube which was placed in the on a hot water beaker. Uh, we found there the since it comes in contact with the hot uh, water, the air particles which was present inside the test tube it starts to increase the size, it starts to expand, and as a result, it occupies more and more space. It rises up, and the, uh, and as a result, what happened? The balloon which was fitted in the mouth of that test tube it starts to what? It starts to inflate. Okay, it increases the size as because the air particles have occupied the entire space of the balloon. So this says that air expands on heating. It is because of the expansion of air that the balloon which was fitted in that test tube, test tube it has started blowing. Clear? So that was the activity which we have done. And the last is high speed wind is always accompanied by reduced air pressure. So please remember children, wherever, whenever there will be a, a wind with a high speed, okay, then in that area this, uh, the pressure will get Reduce. Okay, that is the most important uh, characteristic of air. Depending on this characteristic of air, different destructive winds also occur, like the cyclone, tornado, all those things we shall discuss later on. So let us uh, check out how we have done this. So in order to prove this characteristic, also we have done some of the activities. I hope you remember that we have taken one bottle. Yes, remember we have taken one empty bottle. Okay, one empty bottle we have taken. Then we have taken a small paper cumble ball. Yes, then we have placed in the mouth of the bottle and we have blown air directly. Okay, we have blown air. And to our surprise, we found that the crumbled paper it has fallen back. Okay, in spite of getting inside by the force of air, it falls back. It came out and it falls down. So it was quite surprising. So you know what was the reason behind it? This is the same reason, means the third characteristic of air. So what happens actually children, when we blow air, okay, when we blow air to the bottle, uh, okay, to the bottle by, uh, through that uh, crumbled paper, okay, the crumbled paper which will be at the mouth of that bottle, if we will blow the air at that particular reason between our mouth and the bottle's neck, the pressure would decrease, okay, the pressure would decrease and the pressure which is created inside the bottle, okay, it will be more. So what happens the moment we blow that, the pressure, since the pressure has reduced in the gapping between our mouth and the bottle's neck, the pressure as compared to the pressure which is inside of the bottle. So the pressure, it gushes, no, it, or you can say it push that, uh, the paper, the crumpled paper uh, towards outside it, the, that the, the pressure from inside it is uh, uh, it, it is it has increased pressure as compared to the pressure which was out so that pressure it uh, no it uh, pushed that paper outside so that is the reason why the paper falls back down okay the paper is not getting inside it, it is because of the pressure difference so now uh, with this activity we can prove that high pressure wind Sorry, a high speed wind is accompanied by low pressure. So what we have done? We have uh, blown the air that was with some high uh, with the high speed, okay? And then the pressure reduced at that particular area. And as a result, we have seen the crumbled paper. In spite of getting inside, it falls down. So that uh, can this particular characteristics can be proved by using two balloons as well. So we have discussed about these two balloons also. So let me uh, just uh, know, reflect on that. So uh, there what we have done, two balloons we have taken and we have tied up in a small rod. And then uh, we, maintain a, uh, uh, we maintain some gap in between that two balloons. And then what we have done, we have blown air from the passage between that two balloons. So what happened? The moment when we, we have blown air, the pressure of that particular area has reduced because we have blown high speed wind. The pressure has reduced. So the pressure which was external towards the pressure which was surrounding the balloons from the other side, it was more. So that pressure has exerted on the balloon and as a result the balloon, they both the balloon, they came nearer. Yes, they came nearer. But before that you told me that ma'am it would go far. So, it has proved wrong and thus characteristics has been proved correct when we have done the activity. So now, 
Uh, under this uh, chapter, uh, in the latter half of the chapter, we have discussed about destructive winds. Okay, so wind, as you all know, it's nothing but uh, wind is nothing but the moving air is called wind. But sometimes, you know, due to the pressure difference, it take up the destructive, you know, the, the destructive form. Means some of the wind, you know, they uh, due to the pressure difference, they become very much devastating and destructive. So there are some examples like cyclone, tornado, and uh, no, the cyclone, tornado, and thunderstorms. Thunderstorms also, it is accompanied by storm and uh, rain. Okay, and then sound and lightning as well. Okay, so let us discuss these one by one. Uh, so uh, uh, at the very beginning, we discussed about thunderstorms. So children, the thunderstorms, as you all know, as the name suggests, thunderstorms are the destructive wind which is accompanied by lightning and sound. Okay, so why, how this occurs? They occur due to the collision between the charged particle. That you will be reading in the higher classes, okay? So thunderstorm is nothing but, this is also, it is occurs due to the pressure difference and uh, due to the collision between the charged particles, okay? And as a result, it produces sound and lightning. So this was thunderstorm. And then next we discussed about a cyclone, okay? So cyclone, uh, what we discussed about cyclone? So cyclone is somewhat like, it's kind of a whirling wind. It's a wind which will move around a low pressure area. Okay, a low pressure area surrounding which the, uh, the wind would move in a spiral manner with a high speed. That is called cyclone. Okay, now why this occurs? This also because of the pressure difference. So what happened you know as we have discussed in the uh, previous classes that uh, when the warm air rises up it takes along with uh, it the water vapor and it forms a water droplet at, uh, at the high altitude. So during this process what happened the moment when they forms this cloud or water vapor they release the heat, they release the heat in the atmosphere okay and then again the air which surrounds it gets heated up and the hot air it rises up. The moment it rises up, the cold air from surrounding it comes and takes its place. And I told you that hot air when it rises up, pressure falls down. Okay, I need to say it drops down the pressure. So more and more wind would get warm by the released heat and more and more, uh, no, uh, what to say, that warm air will rise up and it's create a reason of low pressure and more and more cold air would come. So like this, the cycle continues and it results in the origin of, or uh, it results in cyclone, formation of cyclone. Then we discussed about the structure of cyclone, if you remember. So in structure of cyclone, we have said that there is uh, no, a very calm and silent zone, that is the uh, no, eye of the cyclone, okay? Uh, there what happened is this eye, it's a reduced pressure area. Then we discussed about the eye wall, we discussed about the spiraling uh, band of wind, okay. So next uh, we discussed about tornado, okay. So the last uh, we discussed about tornado, tornado is also, you know, it's like it's a destructive, uh, uh, it's a kind of destructive wind or you can say it's a dark colored funnel like cloud which starts from the, I uh, know it, uh, it, it is in the form of a funnel and it reaches to the ground. Okay, it touches the ground and the wind will blow in a spiral manner very um, with high speed. Okay, what it does, it used to take all the dirt at, at the down, lower surface and then it uh, throw its inside at the center. The phenomena is somewhat same as like the cyclone, there also low pressure zone is at the center. So they, what they used to do, they used to capture everything, all the, uh, every thing and it, they bring it into the middle and after that they throw it from the up, that is the funnel shaped structure, okay. It's somewhat like a dark colored funnel shaped structure that also occurs due to the pressure difference. Fine children, and towards the end of the chapter, we have discussed about destruction caused by cyclones and the different safety measures uh, that people should take during this 
uh, kind of situation or during cyclone and tornado. So, uh, regarding this uh, topic, we have discussed that the cyclone hit areas results in loss of life, property, telecommunication and transportation. Yes. So, the wall of water, okay, the wall of uh, water results in severe destructions, okay, it brings rainfall, okay, the cyclone sometimes even brings the rainfall which may lead into floody situation. So, sometimes it damages the agriculture, even the fertility of the soil also. So, these are some of the destruction which is caused by cyclone. Okay. And then we have discussed about different safety measures, okay, the different safety measures which we need to take during such situation. So, you know, uh, regarding the safety measures, the government should forecast the cyclones 24 hours in advance with the help of satellite and brother. So, so children, we need to take, we need to follow up different safety measures during such type of situations. So, like the government should uh, forecast uh, about the cyclone 24 hours in advance with the help of satellite, okay. Cyclone shelters should be made for people living in the cyclone prone areas. Uh, then we need to stay indoors and should not ignore the warnings which are being given by the meteorological departments and we should have some emergency numbers with us, okay. So, these are the certain safety measures which we need to follow during such uh, difficult time. So children, I hope you must have understood the entire thing, okay, the entire concept of the chapter. So now at the end, we shall be discussing once again the different steps which results in cyclone, thunderstorm and then uh, the cloud formation. So let's look this slide. So now dear students, let's look the flow chart. The following flow chart will help you to understand the phenomena that leads to the formation of clouds and falling of rains and creation of storms and cyclones. So children, this is the step-by-step -step process or you can say this is a flow chart, okay? So please listen carefully. Differences of temperature between two reasons sets convection in air. Warm air rises, creating a low pressure, which is followed by cool air converses to the low pressure area. Uh, then warm air rises, cools and water vapor condenses to form clouds. The step is followed by the bigger water drops in the cloud falls to the ground as rain, hail or snow. Then falling water droplets and rising air uh, more vigorously to produce thunderstorm and under certain weather conditions, storms may develop into cyclones. So dear students, these are the following steps and I would suggest you to please note it down in your classwork copy and remember this flowchart which will help you. Okay. So children, I hope uh, this chapter is very much clear to you all. Yes. So today I would like to wind up and thank you so much for listening to me. Stay safe, stay healthy. See you in the next class.